Hey everybody, it's Dan the Git School Dude. Today we're going to be talking about Docker and the GitLab registry. This is going to be a two-part video, so make sure you check out part two when this one's over. Let's go ahead and uh, get started. Today we're going to be using the Hello World repo, as we do typically. It's a very uh, simple repository that builds a Hello binary. There's a couple uh, C++ files and a make file so we can build and we can run and it prints out some information about some classes we've created. Before we get in too far into this video, if you haven't seen my GitLab CI videos or my GitLab videos, I highly encourage you to go over and check them out. Uh, my videos are ordered in particular numbering on purpose because uh, if you don't understand a concept, that just means go back and watch an earlier video. So in particular, introduction to GitLab, GitLab CI, and uh, uh, 31 GitLab CI Vision artifacts, workspace, and runners would be useful um, as introductory material to what we're about to talk about. So we're going to talk about Docker today. You may or may not be familiar with Docker. Uh, you go to docker.com, you can check it out. It is a containerization software product that has taken off in the last few years um, for the purposes of uh, dev and ops, or you sometimes hear, uh, they'll say DevOps as a shorthand for it. And it's essentially a containerization mechanism that lets you um, provide the capabilities of a virtual machine without the overhead of it. So we're not going to get into too much of the details because I want to dig right in the terminal, start building some Docker containers, um, start running some tests in them, and hook it all up to GitLab CI. So that's the whole point of this video. So we're going to this Hello World project that um, I've used before and um, in our terminal is this Hello repo that we're going to be using is here on GitLab.com. Uh, it's a public project. You're welcome to check it out, mess around, fork it, uh, do whatever you want to do as part of the learning process. Before we build our first Docker image here, I want to show you uh, the project on GitLab.com to essentially point out um, that each project has uh, what's called a registry. And the registry for containers is, um, you can think of it as a, a remote in Git. The registry is essentially where Docker containers can be pushed to and pulled from so that other people can get the containers. And in this particular case, there's a registry per project that lets you push Docker containers to your project so that they're available for GitLab CI to use or anyone else to use, really. The other thing I want to point out here is that if we go down into settings, CI slash CD, we will see under the runners section, because we're in GitLab.com, we automatically have access to some shared runners. So you can see here, there's eight available shared runners, and you'll notice that some of them have the Docker tag. That means that they are Docker executors and that they are capable of running a Docker image that a user defines. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. All right, enough of this. Let's go over the terminal, my favorite thing. And let's go ahead and start messing with Docker. So I already have Docker installed depending on your platform. Um, this is, I'm on an old version of Ubuntu. I really need to update it. But um, the point is here, almost any modern Linux flavor uh, will support Docker through either a yum install and apt-get or you can uh, get it through other means through Docker documentation. And another thing to note is that when Docker is installed, you actually have to either have sudo or be assigned to the Docker group in order to execute Docker commands. So for example, there's a lot of Docker commands you can see here. We're only gonna use a couple of them today. We're gonna use the images uh, for sure. If we look at git status here, we can see that I've already done some prep work for this video. I've created uh, some changes in the make file that already exists and I've created this Docker file. This is a new file. Um, and let's just go ahead and open both of them up so we can see them here. And this Docker file is the way that you define what is in your image. So this is the whole file. You can see it all in one shot. It's just a few lines here. Um, in this video, we're going to pick a Linux flavor. We pick uh, CentOS 6.8 just because. Um, and this Docker file is actually going to define what is in the image and what packages are installed in the image. 
This Docker file is the way we specify what will be in the image. Now, there's a lot of directives from run, copy, command. We're not going to go over them all today. Um, just know that from will start from a base image uh, coming from Docker Hub. In this case, we're going to make our image uh, the CentOS 6.8 flavor of Linux. Uh, we're going to install a few packages, some simple text editor Vim and GCC because our project needs it to build. Um, and then this final directive will actually copy the contents of our repo, which is just, you know, the source files, into the location slash apps on the image. And the final command is essentially what is the default action when this container is started. And in this case, we're just going to create a bash shell. So the make file on top has been modified to add these targets. If you don't know much about make, that's fine. All we're gonna know, uh, all you need to know is that when you type make build CentOS 6, it's gonna execute this line. Now this is the Docker build command. This actually um, says using this Docker file, um, tag it with this name and build the image on this machine locally. And we have another command for the run. So once the image, which is tagged with this name, exists, we will be able to run it. So let's go ahead and build it, shall we? So if you don't know much about make, feel free to go ahead and copy these commands or similar in your area and run them. Um, you don't need the make file to do what we're doing, I guess is what I want to say next. OK, so let's go ahead and execute uh, the first Docker command by running make uh, build CentOS 6. You'll see, you'll see that it's executing the command that we just showed, right? So it's uh, Docker uses uh, a daemon architecture. So there is no idea. If you've used virtual machines before, you're probably wondering, well, where is the image? What's the file that is the giant binary image of, uh, of the platform that I'm trying to load? Docker doesn't work that way. There is no file. It is a client interaction with the Docker service that creates the images locally on the machine. That's exactly what's happening here. It has pulled the Docker base image of CentOS 6.8 and now it is installing the packages and all the dependencies of those packages per a normal yum install command. This process may take a few minutes. We'll just wait for it to complete. Okay, the container is successfully built, which it's showing at the end here. So you can see that it essentially the Docker file that we showed earlier, each line was executed sequentially. In fact, Docker uses a layering system. So you can see these steps are numbered, right? So this was the copy of the content into the container. I'm going to show you that when we start the container up here in a couple minutes. And then the final command uh, gets executed. So everything above here was the yum install. In fact, let me go open that back up just so it's clear. Oops. One thing that's cool about Docker is it uses a layering mechanism. So each one of these lines is actually considered a Docker layer on the, under the hood. And if you wanted to install something new or add something to your image, it exists as a layer on top of the previous layers so that the previous layers don't have to be rebuilt. So I'm going to show that to you in a second. But before we all, uh, do all that, let's just go ahead and actually run the container. So if you remember, the way we run the container is with this command. Let's just go ahead and paste it in here instead of using the make file. You can see that we have run the container. Instantly we are dropped as the root user onto um, a hash representing the container and uh, I can prove to you that we are now in uh, CentOS 6 by doing cat red hat release and you can see that we are in CentOS 6, 8, even though the host machine is Ubuntu 14. And just to prove that to you, I now have a terminal on the host machine. I can do uh, LSB release to show that we're running Ubuntu 14. Flip over to the other tab. You can see in this tab we are inside CentOS 6, 8, which is pretty cool stuff. So one thing, uh, another thing I want to point out here is that um, the containerization isolates processes. So for example, if I run top, 
inside the container, we're going to see only the processes that are inside that container, which is the shell that we entered the container with and top, which is a child of that shell. Now, if we look at top on the host machine and we flip over and let's just pick a user and say root, you'll see that these are all the processes running on the actual host. So what's in top inside the container, and it's not just top, but um, all processes that are contained within the container cannot see the host. And that is one of the major features of containerization, besides the fact that the container is much faster than a virtual machine would be. So if you recall from our Docker file, if we cd to slash apps, we should see our code and we do. Now the code gets copied there when the image is built. So it's actually already built. So we can go ahead and make clean, make and run all on CentOS 6, even though the host machine is Ubuntu. Now what's so powerful about Docker is, is we just pick CentOS 6. There are so many flavors of Linux, and a lot of times when you're building software, you want to be able to test your product, not on your necessarily just on your host machine, but every platform that you support. And Docker is a great way to do that. So let's exit this container by just uh, exiting the shell that's in the container. That will automatically bring the container down. And let's go ahead and do what we were talking about before and add a layer. So here's what we're going to do. Let's say for whatever reason we wanted Git to be installed on the layer. These two layers were already created as part of the build process. But we're going to add a new layer, which means it can reuse the old stuff. So if I do make, you know what, let me just do it the other way. In case you all aren't using make. This is the docker build command. We're going to execute the exact same build command that we so execute. If we execute our docker build command again, you'll see that we actually get a yum install on the git. So the new git layer is created. Now in this case, it's showing using cache because through the magic of editing, I did this earlier. But had uh, this cache not existed, you would see the yum install actions and all the dependencies come in right here. And then, of course, because layers under it have to be added on top, it will execute anything under. So I just wanted to point out that this layering mechanism lets you quickly update what's inside the image. And you do that by just adding a line to the Docker file and rebuilding the image. OK. Let's run the image now. And we will see that we are dropped into a root shell on the new container. And git is now available, right? Which git? Git exists. It is, of course, the CentOS 6 version of Git, so it's probably a, a, an earlier version than the one I have on the host. There's so much to get to with Docker that we're not going to have time in this video because I really want to get to the GitLab CI portion of this, which is the whole motivation. But I do want to show you a couple things that are confusing to new users for Docker. One, if, I were to, if I'm to go over here and type Docker images, we'll see a list of images, right? But if I do Docker PS, I will see a list of containers. containers are an instance of an image. People often use the terminology interchangeably, but they are actually different. So this uh, container ID with this hash came from this image, and that image is listed here from this image hash. I hope that makes sense. So you can see what's actually running inside the container, and you can actually execute more than one process in an already running container. So on this terminal, we have the container already running. Let's say we wanted to get another shell inside this container. Because if we just run our docker run command again like this, it's actually going to spawn another container. It's not going to give us a shell inside the existing container. So if you want to do that, you can do docker exec dash ti. Give it the container you want to run the process in. And let's just say we want another shell. Execute that. I now have two shells. Each uh, tab here is a shell inside the same container, and I can prove that to you by running top. And you can see that we now have one more bash shell inside the container. OK, we're exiting the container here. We're going to end the video right there. Uh, that's it for this video. So in part two of the video, we're going to hook this Docker container up to a GitLab registry for the Hello World project in uh, the Git School Dude namespace so that we can test that project inside the Docker container we have just defined in GitLab CI. So stay tuned for part two. I'm Dan, the Git School Dude, and I'll see you all next time.